Hey, let's have a moment of introspection and remove some tech bias. Repeat after me. Not everyone wants a traditional smartphone. Some people don't want to spend more than $100 for a phone. Some people use phones primarily for phone calls and don't really want to text or game or social media. Now that we've unpacked that, let's have some fun. But first, if any of the videos you've watched on the channel have helped you, hit us with that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and click on that notification bell so you'll know when we upload the latest content. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a cellular phone? Why, yes, I do. Oh, so do I. <laughs> Ameritech has made cellular much more affordable. The affordable, transportable cellular telephone. Uh, Don, let's change the meeting to 10. Change of plans? Call me if you need No me. problem okay. with the flip phone. Can't remember those directions? Just give a call. If you recognized any of the products in that montage, you're going to appreciate what I'm about to share with you. Let's take a look at a flip phone. From the same folks who recently gave us the potentially game-changing TCL 10 devices comes the Alcatel Go Flip 3. And then one of the phones I've owned during my life of smart ownership, which had the best antenna and signal of almost any phone I've owned, was the original Nokia 3310, first launched in 2000 and then relaunched in 2017 as the 3310 3G. I actually have a few Nokia retro phones uh, that I've been looking at. They're pretty cool. But let's talk about the Alcatel Go Flip 3 first. The Go Flip 3 is a small plastic bodied flip which has just enough smarts to not be considered a dumb phone with enough ease that it isn't as much a learning curve as a traditional smartphone. What you're getting in terms of hardware is a device with an almost one and a half inch color screen on the outside and a larger nearly three inch LCD inside the phone. It's a bit grainy, but this phone wasn't built for social media picture gazing. The right side of the phone is where you'll find the volume rocker. The left side of the phone is where you'll find your standard three and a half millimeter headphone jack and below that, a micro USB charging port. Harkening back to old days, you'll get a removable battery as well as a space for a micro SD card up to 32 gigabytes. On the back of the phone, you'll also find a camera when it's open and a speaker phone. We'll come back to that camera in a moment. Internally, the phone has the guts to support LTE and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. If you lose LTE signal, the phone can use 3G and 2G as well. The phone supports HD calling and it sounds pretty good. I haven't been able to test it in loud public environments just yet. Thank you, COVID. The speakerphone is actually pretty darn loud. The phone runs on an operating system called Kai OS, which allows you to connect to some smart features, but we'll get to that more in a moment. It does take a moment to boot up, but once you do, navigation is pretty simple. There's a ring at the center of the phone with an OK in the middle and a navigational outer ring. The lower part is your back button and the upper left and right are your soft buttons uh, for on-screen menu functions. Unlike traditional smartphones, KaiOS doesn't come with a bunch of bloatware. From the home screen, you get access to four apps by default. YouTube, Google Maps, Google Assistant, and the KaiOS App Store, where you can go and download WhatsApp. You'll access WhatsApp and other apps, which aren't on the initial home screen, simply by pressing the OK button. I downloaded Facebook as well, and though I doubt most users of this phone will be accessing Facebook through it, it does work, as you'd expect. It isn't terrible, but it isn't something I'd actually be using on a regular basis. I don't want this girl. So, listen in. You don't need to go chase a waterfall because there's a manufacturer who wants to give your wallet and your communication needs some TLC.
I also looked at YouTube videos on the phone and it was a surprisingly serviceable experience, all things considered. I could definitely watch videos as a time waster on this phone with a pair of headphones plugged in. Going back through some of these quick settings, you'll also see things like your call log, browser, camera, photo gallery, the Google app, and more. Like I said, this phone is fairly smart for those wanting little more than a feature phone. And voice calls on T-Mobile's network were crystal clear for me. According to callers on the other end, I came in clear as well. One caveat, which I've found to be consistent with all phones, is that Wi-Fi calling, which it does support, isn't that great an experience. If you're going to text message, it's old school style with one saving grace, Google Assistant. Instead of having to triple tap out letters, you can just ask Google Assistant to send a message to a contact. Rounding out the features of this phone, there is a camera and it falls firmly in the category of potato. But if you're feeling nostalgic about how bad pictures on phones used to look, this is definitely a trip down memory lane. And the battery, it isn't huge, but it will get you around two or three days of standby with several hours of talk time. Again, I'm not a huge phone caller doing most of my communication through email, text, and Slack channels, but the calling experience on this phone was loud and clear. And speaking of loud and clear, how about some loud, clear throwbacks with clear calling from one of your old school favorites? Nokia has some handsets which will make you say, whoa. Looking back to my early slab style feature phones, the Nokia 3310 was one of the best I ever owned. It wasn't fancy like the gold tone Nokia slider I once owned and didn't have as many features, but it did something most of my other early phones did not do. And that is hold a signal like no other. So I have favorable memories of that device and was looking forward to seeing what uh, Nokia's re-release of the phone had an offer, the 3310 3G. These devices here are running that same Kai OS as the Alcatel Go Flip 3 or a very similar Series 30 OS. So what I said about the Alcatel device, for the most part rings true here with these. And here you have it here, the Nokia 8110 4G. This dual SIM device lights up when you open up the flip or press the power button on the side. Of course, not being touch screen, you're going to have to open the slide to interact with the phone. One other caveat is that there are no physical volume buttons, which is a pain in the backside while on calls or watching YouTube videos, which actually turned out to be a less horrible experience than I was expecting. At the end of the day though, this is a fun device for those not wanting a smartphone and looking for a simple phone for calling only. The cool thing is that much like the Alcatel phone, this does have some extras in case you want a little more. The phone is equipped with Wi-Fi and is LTE enabled, so you can also use it as a hotspot. This is a GSM only phone, so you can use it on AT&T or T-Mobile or an MVNO like Cricket or Metro PCS. You should expect to get around four or five days of use out of the phone with heavy calling. Nokia says that you should get 25 days worth of standby while connected to an LTE network. That said, if you're a heavy caller, you may eventually find the slides novelty to wear off if you're having to move it every time you need to make a call or invoke Google Assistant. In that case, let's take a look at the 3310 3G. At first glance, this may look like a nightmare of butt or pocket dialing, but the buttons and keyboard lock. You unlock them by clicking the center button and then hitting the asterisk, and now you're ready to make a phone call. Unlike Alcatel's offering, there is no Wi-Fi built into this phone, so no Wi-Fi calling either. This phone has even less functionality than the 8110. Just like on the previous two devices, the phone calls are clear and audible and the camera is garbage. But if you're buying these phones, it probably isn't to take candidates. Like the other two, you do get a three and a half millimeter headphone jack and 
Bluetooth for wireless headset caller. All in all, these are really solid phone calling phones with a couple extras in case you want them. Even Google Maps, if you get lost and need some direction. That direction will be a bit slow, but you'll get it and you'll get on your way. If you're in search of a phone to use as, well, a phone, this might, one of them, be just what you're looking for. You can find the Alcatel Go Flip 3 for $100 on T-Mobile, the Nokia 8110 for $70 and works only on AT&T and its affiliate carriers, those MVNOs like Cricket. The 3310 will work on AT&T, T-Mobile, Metro PCS, Cricket or Mint. Hey, we don't take it lightly that you've taken the time to watch with us. We thank you for being here at reviews.org. For info on the best prepaid plans, go ahead and hit up reviews.org and figure out where you're going to take your unlocked phone and get your calling on. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for reviews.org. Thank you for watching.